Today, we're talking about a New York Times cease and desist pointed at perplexity and why the bigger story is how AI is fundamentally reshaping the web, including its core business model. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today, like I said, nominally the story is about another target coming into the New York Times view, where the Times has told Perplexity basically to stop using their content. The Times has sent Perplexity a cease and desist, demanding that Perplexity stop accessing and using its content. The Times, of course, is already embroiled in a lawsuit with OpenAI around using the Times content in their model training. The Times alleged that the way Perplexity uses newspaper articles is a violation of copyright. The Wall Street Journal published an excerpt of the cease and desist, which read, Perplexity and its business partners have been unjustly enriched by using, without authorization, the Times expressive, carefully written, and researched and edited journalism without a license. Now, unsurprisingly, Perplexity, for their part, says that they're taking this seriously, that they're not ignoring the warning, with CEO Aravan Srinivas saying, We are very much interested in working with every single publisher, including the New York Times. We have no interest in being anyone's antagonist here. Notably, Perplexity already has licensing deals set up with a handful of individual publishers, although reports are that their terms are less generous than the eight- and nine-figure licensing arrangements offered by OpenAI. Still, it's a little bit different here than the OpenAI situation, where Perplexity is not being accused of using this content to train their models. In a statement, they said, We aren't scraping data for building foundation models, but rather indexing web pages and surfacing factual content as citations to inform responses when a user asks a question. The law recognizes that no one organization owns the copyright over facts. This is what allows us to have a rich and open information ecosystem, not to mention it gives news organizations the ability to report on topics that were previously covered by another news outlet. So one aspect of this is just the broader media world adapting to the AI landscape. Indeed, it's getting so confusing that the Press Gazette in the UK recently tried to sum up who's suing and who's signing. On the lawsuit side, Mumsnet, the Center for Investigative Reporting, Eight daily newspapers owned by Alden Global Capital, including the New York Daily News and the Chicago Tribune, The Intercept, Raw Story, and Alternet, The New York Times, and Getty Images are all in the midst of lawsuits against OpenAI or other AI companies. Meanwhile, on the signing deal side, there is a big Hearst deal, which was just announced last week, which will include 20 magazine titles and 40 newspapers in total. Microsoft has partnered with FT, Reuters, Axel Springer, Hearst, and USA Today. Condé Nast has signed a multi-year deal with OpenAI, and the list goes on. Now, interestingly, a lot of these deals aren't about training data, but are about how the content from these publishers shows up in search results. And to me, this gets at the much more interesting part of this story, which is the changing nature of search on the web. For the last 20 years, the default starting point for people interacting with the web has been the Google search bar. You type in what you're looking for or a question you're trying to get answered, and you have a list of little blue links based on Google's indexing. You also have the ability to advertise, to put your link at the head of those search results. And an entire massive industry has grown up around trying to help you get to the top of those search results more organically. The bargain between publishers and Google has been that Google would be allowed to crawl and index all of these websites in exchange for pointing traffic their way. What's different about the era that we're heading into is that if the AI summary becomes the dominant form of information consumption, there is potentially a lot less of that clicking behavior. In other words, if AI can read websites for you and summarize a bunch of them very quickly, it's immensely time-saving for the end user, which is great for them, but it means that they spend less time clicking around. Less time clicking around means fewer sites get visitors and advertisers don't get paid as much. And this is really what's at stake with perplexity. One of the things that makes perplexity interesting is that it doesn't have the same sort of legacy business model that Google does, which would limit its ability to go whole hog into this new format. And for a lot of people, when it comes to which is the more valuable search experience, it's not even really a question. Dilbert creator Scott Adams tweeted, Try the Perplexity app for five minutes and tell me Google still has a business model. You might never use Google again. And Perplexity is certainly moving quickly. Yesterday, the company announced Perplexity Finance, which includes real-time stock prices, deep dives into a company's financials, the ability to compare multiple companies, studying 13 Fs of hedge funds, etc. Investor Jim O'Shaughnessy writes, Is it just me or does all of the fire perplexity is bringing should make Google nervous? CEO Arvan Srinivas responded to that saying, Here are the categories perplexity lacks in today relative to Google. Visual, images, local maps, navigational latency, needle in the haystack queries, like specific home on real estate or rental markets, stack overflow bugs, link to developer library, docs, etc. Shorts, entertainment, shopping, knowledge graphs, and interactive cards. Basically what Srinivas is saying, really more declaring in this post, is that each one of these things is going to be knocked down in turn. They are, in other words, coming for the king full stop. 
Now, another interesting thing about perplexity is that they've been integrating more reasoning models into search with Srinivas again saying, perplexity pro search is already a research and decision agent. We just don't use the buzzword. Now, how this all resolves in terms of business model remains to be seen. A few weeks ago, the Financial Times reported that Perplexity was starting to have conversations with top brands on a new type of ad model. FT writes, Perplexity is seeking to redesign the auction-based ad system pioneered by Google. At present, Perplexity's AI chatbot gives a comprehensive response to user questions based on information from the internet. Below this, Perplexity offers suggested follow-up queries. Under its new advertising model, brands will be able to bid for a sponsored question, which features an AI-generated answer approved by the advertiser. Perplexity has apparently been talking with companies including Nike and Marriott, and is hoping to roll out this ad system by the end of the year. And so, of course, the question is, will the AI summary model make there be less of a market for advertising and less of a pathway to publishers in general, or is it just going to be different? I'm not exactly sure, but it is a very big question that will have a much bigger impact on everyone's experience of the web than it might seem at first. Anyways, friends, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.